My name is uh, Ernest Sternglass. I'm professor of radiological physics, emeritus of the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. And uh, I've been concerned about the effects of radiation on human health for many decades. As a matter of fact, it goes back to uh, the first years uh, when we built a house here in Pittsburgh, and we were asked whether or not well, everyone was asked to build fallout shelters, and that's how I began to become concerned, because until then, I was working mainly on x-rays and diagnostic radiology, trying to reduce the dose and get better pictures. But when I heard about fallout back in 19, well, it was about 1960, 61, and I was uh, here, uh, president of the local chapter of the uh, Federation of American Scientists, and so we all became concerned, will fallout shelters protect us from all this bomb fallout or if there were an attack on Pittsburgh? And we looked at the recently declassified data on fallout and we concluded, all of us, that there's no way to survive, even if you survive miraculously in a bomb shelter, the entire environment would be contaminated. And that is how I began, began to realize that our government was not telling us the truth about the seriousness of low-level radiation exposures. Because at the same time, in 1960, 61, I found out about a paper by Dr. Alice Stewart in England that was reported uh, at congressional hearings about the need for bomb shelters. And in that paper, it showed that when a woman receives just a couple of x-rays during pregnancy to find out the position of the baby or the size of the uh, opening, the canal through which the baby has emerged, it turns out that she found that women who had received x-rays during pregnancy had twice the risk of developing cancer in their children, that the children before age 10 developed leukemia and cancer at twice the rate than a control group of women who had the same background and same history, same age and everything, and so we knew all of a sudden that very much less radiation is needed to damage the infant in utero. Because for I'm really concerned about mostly is these low level chronic emissions that are constantly coming out of reactors. Sci scientists worldwide basically now accept what's called the linear non-threshold model of health and radiation exposure, which means that any amount of radiation is harmful. So even background radiation is causing illness. Recent study um, from out of UK, they looked at lots of models and measurements and they uh, uh, estimated that about 20% of childhood leukemia is attributable to background radiation. So even background radiation, which is natural, is still causing leukemia in children. We know that children are extremely uh, sensitive to radioactivity. Some studies estimate as, m as much as 100 times more sensitive than adults. Women are more sensitive, and embryos and fetuses are exquisitely sensitive to the effects of radioactivity, which makes it extremely important that pregnant women be protected against any unnecessary radioactivity. We also have to accept that we don't understand everything about this. So when we say that these chronic low-level emissions can't be causing illness, we have to admit that we don't know that. So when you look at the studies that have been done, they started out <clears throat> in the UK in about the 80s when people started to be concerned about seeing a lot of children getting leukemia near their it's facilities. It's very clear that very low dose of radiation is dangerous. The cancer is caused by many mutations, but it's the last mutation that you have that pushes you over the edge. And that last mutation doesn't take much radiation or insult to cause. My name is uh, Don Mosier. I'm a professor in the Department of Immunology and Microbial Sciences at the Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla, California. I'm also a council member from the city of Del Mar. Uh, I've been following the uh, issues at San Onofre closely for several years, and I, I, just one year ago there was a meeting of the NRC in Laguna Beach um, at which I testified, and I was amazed to hear one of the Southern California Edison representatives 
state that radiation is good for you. Um, I've worked as a consultant for the National Cancer Institute, and uh, I'm okay. And uh, I follow the latest data on cancer research very closely. And I will tell you that uh, in my presentation, I'm going to make two big points. One is that the current exposure guidelines for radiation are 20 years out of date and far too high. And secondly, in the last five years in the era of cancer genomics, we've learned how many mutations are associated with cancer, how many mutations directly cause cancer, and that explains why the risk of very low dose radiation is so high. And we need to update our exposure guidelines dramatically. And I'll, in one uh, important illustration of this point, the National Institute of Medicine two years ago issued a report that said women under the age of 40 who do not have any family history of breast cancer should not undergo mammography because the risk of cancer associated with that radiation dose is higher than the environmental background risk. That dose is a fraction of a millisievert, and yet the exposure that a senior ovary worker is allowed to experience each year is 50 millisieverts. So when I say that the current guidelines for exposure are far too generous, we're talking about a log order 10 to 100 fold too generous. So I'm going to present some of the hard science for those of you who like hardcore science uh, in my talk. But the facts are very clear that very low dose irradiation is dangerous. The cancer is caused by many mutations, but it's the last mutation that you have that pushes you over the edge. And that last mutation doesn't take much radiation or insult to cause. I have a question about the uh, radiation dose for the uh, children. Because uh, after 311, the Japanese government, government they have changed the, the uh, regulation, the law for the uh, um, radiation dose to the nation from one millisievert per year to 20 millisievert. And still lots of lots of children are living in the uh, highly contaminated area in Japan. As an uh, expert, I have a question. Do you urge Japanese children to move away from Fukushima? Um, I, I, I know the regulations in Japan, and I think that 20 milli sievert uh, level is, is too high. And so I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, in this study of pediatric uh, exposure to CT scans, 20 milli sieverts was still associated with about 50% uh, of the maximum risk of cancer incidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, a much safer level would be 1 milli sievert. Okay. Right? Uh, there's a little bit of difference between a CT scan where you're getting the whole dose in a short period of time in, in 30 minutes or so compared to 20 millisieverts per year when you don't know what that is, but that's still a cumulative risk uh, of 20 millisieverts, and I think that was a very unwise decision. I agree. Thank you. Didn't answer the back.